And thus, the journey comes to an end. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. A total of 64 episodes. And what a wonderful and magnificent ride it really has been binge watching this anime series. So, I just want to say, this series has been recommended to me countless and countless times before I sat down and watched this series. It, it's been recommended hundreds of times. So many messages of Chibits telling me I need to watch Brotherhood. And so many Chibits recommended me this series. Eventually, they decided to send me the first part of Brotherhood to watch. That's just how much this series has been recommended. And I finally got around to finishing the series. And I have so much I want to talk about because if you do know, I only reviewed Disc 1 and 2, but sadly I couldn't review everything else because of, you know, limitations with a copyright strike. Now, this video, of course, is probably going to be cut up into different parts. I want to assume that I'm going to have to make this over 15 minutes, so yeah, this video is most likely going to be cut up into different segments, and so I'm just going to tell you right now, if you see the video probably cut out at the end and I'm doing something, most likely it's because I'm making another part for this review, because at the moment I can't upload over 15 minutes, and I, I want to try to get this up as soon as possible, so I don't know if I will wait or if I'll put this into parts, but anyways, this anime series. A lot of people have told me that this is in their top 10. A lot of Chibits and a lot of anime watchers tell me that this is a top 10 type series. So many watchers have told me that this is a type of series that will instantly make it into your top 10 and will instantly become one of your favorite series of all time. Now before I reveal you know my top 10 or what I'm going to put this as or what ranking I want to put this as or what I rate it, I want to save it towards the end of the video. What I want to say now is that when it comes to Full Metal Alchemist, it feels like one of the most complete series I have personally seen. When it comes to anime, usually there is a lot of anime I have watched over the years when you finish a season 1, season 2, or even a long-running series. Even recent long-running series have ended. Most of the time, long-running series do not feel complete. And this is quite shocking, because when it comes to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, it feels complete. And that in of itself is a job well done, but there's different ways you can look at a complete series. How do you really feel like a series is complete? Is it because you had the good ending that you wanted when it came to that anime series? Was it everything you expected it would be when the series came to an end? Or did it fulfill everything you wanted and along with answering even more questions than you didn't even expect to be answered? That is the different things we could factor in when it comes to this series, Brotherhood. I will continue to state that I have watched countless, countless anime, and I have felt like it just ends like that, and it doesn't feel complete. Brotherhood is near completion. Like, it's as close to completion as you can possibly get to an anime series and feel satisfied. It's not just the story, but the characters. And that is where I feel like this series really carries its worth at. It's the characters. The casting of these characters are brilliantly executed. I, I will say right now, when it comes to series like over 20-something episodes to 30-something episodes to even 12-something episodes or even 64 episodes, that's Brotherhood, majority of the time the cast gets bloated. And I've seen many anime that have had this Problem. A lot of anime have problems with a bloated cast, and I've seen this in recent long full series reviews I've done, like I've talked about it. Brotherhood, oddly enough, doesn't feel like it has a bloated cast, and that is one of the most surprising things when it came to me watching this series. Almost every single individual character in this anime series had a role to play. They offered something of value to the series. And that right there in of itself is surprising. 
Because usually when you get a lot of characters, especially something like this that's 64 episodes, usually the cast gets so big that you can't care about every character. Usually their plot lines or little side plots don't get answered in time before the series ends. And oddly enough, this series accomplishes that with almost every single character. Almost every character has a big role to play. No matter how small they are to the story, they have a role to play. Even if they didn't make it to the end of the series and they died, they had a role to play. And that in and of itself is awarding of one of the most noteworthy things I have seen in anime. It's definitely rewarding, because it's definitely hard to write even two characters. One character in and of itself is hard to fucking write and make a good character. But you write multiple characters, 10, 15, 20 characters that all have this development and don't feel useless is a feat that normal writers cannot accomplish. And it's a rare, rare thing to see in an anime, manga, literature, movies, anything. It's a rare thing to see. And Brotherhood accomplished that by answering a lot of different plot lines throughout throughout the entire series. To get on to specific matters, individual characters that you would expect to be useless turned out to be very vital at the end game of the series. Like Dr. Marco. He was a person that first gave information about the Philosopher's Stone in the early first 20 episodes of the series of Brotherhood. He gave all the information to us as a viewer to understand what Philosopher's Stones were made of, how they were made, what happened in Ishval, stuff like that. And when you usually get that type of information when it comes from an anime, usually that's it. That That's the rest is all we need from that character like the character's done like the character has served their purpose they have no point left in the series usually that is what happens when it comes to events like this when a character reveals a big plot point like a side character a new character that's introduced usually they will die or they will not serve any other major purpose to the grand scheme of the plot but that is where I get into the main reasons of why this series is good because the way, like, just individually, Dr. Marco as a character had so much weight to the end game, and the way he played a huge role with even our main character, one of our main characters, Roy Mustang, in fixing his eyesight and in helping out against the homunculus in different feats he has done throughout the entirety of Brotherhood is something you don't normally see from a side backup character, or even a background character. He was a background character, not... I wouldn't even say he's a side character, he was a background support character, and that in of itself is mind-blowing. But it goes even further than that. There's even characters that did not have as much screen time but felt very, very developed. Like Pride. Pride was introduced in the later half of the anime of Brotherhood, like around episode 37, 38. Pride was introduced. And Pride didn't have a lot of screen time. He had a lot of screen time, but not a lot of screen time compared to some other characters. And he probably had one of the most lacking screen times compared to other homunculus besides Sloth. And out of all the things, the only character I could say out of all the homunculus that did not have development would be Sloth. And maybe even Lust. And those are like the only two characters I could consider that did not have the greatest amount of development put towards them. But they served a purpose to the end game of the series. They had their little threads and plot points finished and they weren't left open. And that's where I go into the other aspect of how this series managed to answer all these different questions to all these different characters. Because usually a lot of these characters would be forgotten throughout the entire writing of a series. So yeah, I mean, even though Sloth didn't get as much development, or even maybe Lust, Lust was mainly used to be introduced as a person that would show you that Homunculus can die. That was the entire purpose of Lust's character. That, that was the entire purpose. Lust was the introduction to Homunculus, and also the person that introduced us to how these immortal beings can in fact die. That was Lust's purpose, and that in of itself served a major role into the series. Even though you can argue and say that she didn't have as much development as some characters, she played her role to the very end. Now, getting back on topic when it came to a character like Pride, like I said, Pride was one of the last homunculus to be introduced besides Sloth. And like I said, Sloth had the least amount of development, but Pride took me by surprise with 
the development he got in the series. Especially with his role in the end game of the series. Prine actually is the sole survivor out of all the antagonists of the series. And that is something that was really surprising. Prine as a character had this very complex thing going on about him, and it's kind of very ironic how Pride as a character was based off of Father, the main antagonist, the main villain of the series. Pride's entire appearance, like his shadowy eyeball appearance, was based off of Father. And to see how Pride was the sole survivor in the series when it came to the villains, and manage to live on and start a new fulfilling life, it's kind of like the villain passed on and survived, but in a different way. It was like, it was the path that the father should have taken. The dwarf in the flash should have taken if he didn't go down his arrogant path of wanting to drag down God itself. Now, that is my quick, I guess, introduction when it comes to this review. I want to end this first part here, and I want to start at the next part just to end this off here because I know I'm about to hit 15 minutes. So, yeah, I'll see you all in the next part. I'll go in a little bit more in depth, and then there's probably going to be a third or fourth part, you know, just let you know right now. So, I want to end this first part here. See you all in the next part.